Till now we have configured our Spring Cloud config server to take the values from the Git repository and display it on the browser. So as we discussed earlier, all these applications will be having different environments that we showed here. Like limit service will be having different environments, dev, QA, stage and prod. So for each of these environments, we will be having different set of values. So let's go and configure all these different set of values in our Git repository. How we can do that? Let's see that. Go to the folder Git local repository in Spring cloud config server and you can see this is the default file that we created so let's copy this file and paste it again here control v you can change the name here so suppose you want to change this name to dev and let's open the dev file and here we have just copied it from there so we will change the value minimum to 2 and maximum to 222 save this create one more file and name this qa Click on OK and open this QA file. Change the value 99999. Now we have three different set of files the dev, the QA, and the default properties. Here in this application, we are using limit service and the minimum value is 9, maximum value is 9999. In the real time scenario, you can think like you are having different database for the dev environment, different database for QA environment, and prod environment. So you can configure all your databases in here with username, password, the connection string, and all for the QA environment you can give QA username and password for dev environment you can give dev db username and password suppose you are using a url in your program and you are hard coding it in your program if tomorrow that url changes you will have to go to the program and you have to change the hard coded url to the changed url but when you are using this kind of configuration based things you can just go to the properties file and you can modify your url so now we have configured the dev and the qa environments let's go ahead and check if we are getting the values so in place of default let's give it a dev so when we give the value as dev we are getting two property sources here one is the dev configuration and the other one is the default configuration now why we are getting two property sources that's because the one you have created here is a default property suppose you are not giving this property you are commenting this out so at that time it is able to get only one property and the other property it will take from here so how do we set the priority for this like which one will be picked up so these priorities we will set it when we are connecting this limit service to our spring cloud config server now when you change the value of environment to qa the values will change see the qa properties is coming first and after that the default properties are coming so this is the way we will be configuring our environments and its variables now let's go one more step ahead and let's connect our limit service to a spring cloud config server till now we were fetching the values of limit service from the application dot properties of limit service that is this one we were fetching the values from here now we will not fetch the values from here we will be fetching it from spring cloud config server properties file so what all things you need to change for this the first change that we need to do is to remove these two text lines from here because we are going to pick it from spring cloud config server the other change that we will be doing is renaming this application dot properties because when we are using the spring cloud config server to pick up the properties we have to change this name to something called bootstrap let's refactor and rename this bootstrap dot properties save it one more thing you should notice here that you have given the application name as limit service here but in the spring cloud config server limit service configuration either you can change the values here or you can rename this to limit service it will be better if we rename this to limit service rename this as well We are renaming all these three files. Now we have renamed all these three files. We have not committed the changes in our local Git repository. Let's go ahead and commit these changes. Go to this directory and click on git bash here. And you can check the status by using git status command. We deleted one with the name with the configuration. So it is coming here. You need to add all these changes. How you can add all these changes by typing the command git add minus capital a click enter all these changes are added and when you click on git status now you will get all these in the green color now you have to git commit it 
minus m in the message updated properties so the changes are pushed now let's see if our limit service application is running you can check that from the boot dashboard yes it is running at port 8080 let's go ahead and give localhost 8080 limits that is the name to this so we are getting here maximum is zero minimum is zero okay so still our work is not yet completed okay why we are getting this zero and zero let me tell you that that's because we have removed the properties from here we have given the name as a bootstrap but how does this limit service application will know that you have to go and fetch the values from spring cloud config server because we have not specified anything from here how we can specify that that you have to go and fetch it from from spring cloud config server by giving the location of this application spring cloud config uri equals to what is the uri of this application that is http localhost call 8888 that's the uri that we have exposed this service and one more change that we have to make is adding the dependency in our limit service form xml the dependency that we are going to add is a spring cloud starter config let's copy this and paste it in our form xml make sure that the version of spring cloud starter config should match with the version of spring boot that you are using so 2.2.2.release that's the current version that i'm using after that you have to save this and once you have to restart your limit service application so my application is started now and let's go to the browser and try to hit refresh and now you can see that it is picking the maximum and the minimum values from the default file we will learn how to set up the profile in the future now let's review on what we have done till now so we created a limit service this limit service is having a maximum and a minimum value that we first gave it through application.properties after that we created a spring cloud config server and we created a git repository where we will be storing all our properties so ultimately we are picking all the properties from this git through this spring cloud config server so Currently, we are using this limits microservice. In the future, we will be making this currency exchange microservice and the currency calculation microservice. These all the services will be having different kind of environments and all the environments properties will be stored in this one common location that is a Git and everything will be talking through a spring cloud config server so this makes it very easy for us to maintain the environments because there will be so many instances of all these microservices and if we have this one common place where we can do all the configuration it will be very easy for anybody to maintain the application later on we will also be learning like when we make any changes in these properties our microservices is going to pick all these properties automatically that will be learning learning at later point of time so let's move on to the next step here now we are going one more step ahead and we are going to create this currency exchange service so this currency exchange service will be talking to a database by using jpa and the currency calculation service will be talking to this currency exchange service so the currency exchange service why we will be using this suppose you want to convert a us dollar into indian rupees so what things we will be needing to convert a usd into a inr let's try to understand it like this we'll be exposing our currency exchange at port 8000 and suppose we want to convert from usd to inr so for that we will be returning something like this from usd to inr and the conversion multiplication that will be coming from the database that is 75 after that the currency calculation service that will calculate the total amount and it will take the help from the currency exchange service you want to convert a usd to inr and how much money you want to convert suppose you have 10000 usd and you want to convert this to inr so conversion multiple that you get is 75 and the quantity that you have is 1000 so the total calculated amount will be your multiplication of 75 and 1000 that is 75,000 INR so going forward we'll be implementing this currency exchange service and the currency calculation service I will recommend you to do it from your side once once you have done the implementation you can come and cross check your implementation with whatever I am doing it here